Every minute, over 50 tons of aluminum are produced worldwide, enough to build over 60 airplanes, showcasing the metal's critical role in various industries. In the United States alone, the annual production value of aluminum surpasses $40 billion, and the global market value is expected to reach $350 billion by the end of the decade. This all began with a revolutionary discovery in 1886 by Charles Martin Hall and Paul Herut, who found a method to extract aluminum from its oxide alumina. This innovation drastically reduced the metal's cost, making it widely accessible for the first time. So how is it made? It all starts with bauxite, the primary source of aluminum. This reddish clay material rich in aluminum oxides is predominantly found in tropical and subtropical areas, including countries like Australia, Brazil, and Guinea. The extraction of aluminum begins with mining bauxite, which is then subjected to preliminary treatments aimed at removing impurities and increasing the aluminum content. These initial steps typically involve washing and crushing the ore. The refined bauxite undergoes the Bayer process, developed in the late 19th century, which produces alumina from bauxite. Here, bauxite is mixed with a hot sodium hydroxide solution, which separates the aluminum-containing components. The mixture is then cooled, causing alumina to precipitate out, resulting in a white powder that serves as the key ingredient for aluminum production. After the extraction of alumina, it is purified to remove any lingering impurities, ensuring the aluminum produced meets high-quality standards. The refined alumina is then transformed into metallic aluminum through the hall herut process, marking its transition into the versatile material used in a wide range of products and applications globally. Technological advancements from the initial discovery to today's highly efficient production techniques have exponentially increased our capacity to produce aluminum. These developments have enabled the production of millions of tons of aluminum annually, meeting the growing demand across various industries. Once alumina is derived from the Bayer process, it enters the next phase to become metallic aluminum. This critical stage transforms the white alumina powder into the versatile metal. In this process, alumina is dissolved in a molten bath of cryolite, which brings the melting point of alumina down from 2050 to 950 degrees Celsius, or 3,700 to 1,750 degrees Fahrenheit. This lower melting point allows for the efficient conduct of electrolysis. The process involves passing a strong electric current through carbon electrodes immersed in the molten bath. This current breaks the alumina down into aluminum and oxygen, with the oxygen reacting with the carbon electrodes to create carbon dioxide and leaving behind molten aluminum metal at the bottom of the cell. Molten aluminum is collected from the bottom of the electrolytic cell at regular intervals. The operation is sustained by continuously adding alumina to the electrolyte and extracting aluminum, maintaining a steady production flow. The energy demand for aluminum production is substantial, necessitating large amounts of electricity to sustain the electrolysis. Consequently, aluminum manufacturing facilities are often situated near abundant power sources, notably hydroelectric power plants, to reduce energy costs. This high energy requirement has spurred efforts within the industry to enhance process sustainability through energy recuperation and recycling initiatives. After the molten aluminum is extracted, it is either cast into ingots for standard use or molded into specific shapes for specialized applications. These ingots are the basis for further manufacturing processes, including rolling and extrusion, which tailor the aluminum for diverse uses. After the initial extraction and casting into ingots or specific shapes, the next step involves transforming these basic forms into a variety of products like plates, rolls, rods, and notably, aluminum foil. This transformation is achieved through different processing techniques tailored to the desired end product. For aluminum plates and sheets, the process begins with heating the ingots to a malleable state. These heated ingots are then passed through rolling mills, which systematically reduce their thickness. The precision in this rolling process determines the thickness and quality of the aluminum plates and sheets, making them suitable for applications ranging from construction to automotive manufacturing, where durability and lightweight are essential. In the production of aluminum rolls and rods, the process similarly starts with heating. However, the focus shifts to creating longer, thinner forms. 
Rods are formed by extruding the heated aluminum through dies with precise diameters, resulting in products used in electrical applications due to aluminum's excellent conductivity. Rolls, on the other hand, are created by coiling the aluminum sheets or plates post-rolling, useful in packaging, including the food industry, for their protective qualities against moisture and other environmental factors. Aluminum foil stands out for its unique manufacturing process and utility. The production of foil involves an additional rolling step where sheets are passed through a series of mills to achieve the remarkably thin gauges required for kitchen use and industrial applications, often less than 0.2 millimeters. The extreme thinness of the foil makes it ideal for wrapping foods, reflecting heat, and serving as a barrier against light, odors, and moisture, preserving freshness and preventing contamination. Post-processing treatments such as anodizing or coating aluminum products enhance their natural properties. Anodizing, for example, increases corrosion resistance, surface hardness, and wear resistance, making the aluminum more durable and aesthetically pleasing. This treatment is particularly beneficial for architectural components and outdoor furniture, where longevity and visual appeal are key considerations. Throughout the manufacturing process, rigorous quality control measures are in place to ensure that the aluminum products meet strict standards for their intended uses. This includes testing for mechanical properties, corrosion resistance, and dimensional accuracy, ensuring the aluminum's performance in its final application. Once aluminum has been processed into its final form, be it plates, rolls, rods, or foil, it undergoes final packaging to ensure the product reaches consumers and industries in perfect condition. This stage is tailored to protect the aluminum products during storage and transportation, safeguarding them against environmental factors and physical damage. Aluminum plates and sheets are typically stacked and wrapped in heavy-duty plastic or waterproof paper to prevent moisture damage. They might also be strapped to pallets, making them easier to handle and transport. This method keeps the plates and sheets secure and prevents surface damage that could impair their utility in applications requiring high precision and aesthetic quality. Rods and rolls, due to their different shapes and uses, have unique packaging requirements. Rods are often bundled together and wrapped in plastic or banded to secure pallets for transport. This packaging ensures the rods remain straight and undamaged during handling. Aluminum rolls, particularly those used for foil or thin sheets, are protected by robust cardboard cores inside the rolls and wrapped in plastic or paper to prevent unrolling and surface contamination. Aluminum foil, known for its delicate nature and extensive use in food packaging and preservation, receives special attention. Rolls of foil are packaged in cardboard boxes that serve not only as protection, but also as dispensers. These boxes often feature a cutting edge, making it convenient for consumers to cut the foil to size. The packaging design for aluminum foil focuses on ease of use, protection, and preserving the foil's cleanliness and hygienic properties until it is ready to be used.